Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, I welcome you all to this second session of AMCON keynote speakers. My name is Bhavika Uday Nani, and uh, this is the second half of the keynote speakers. We'll begin shortly. Firstly, I'll begin with the introduction of our speaker. It's my privilege to introduce to you our next speaker for today. He is a man who uh, he is a man who is a renowned name in the field of liver surgery. He'll be speaking with us, uh, sharing his knowledge on the topic, exciting world of liver surgery. He's a surgeon who, uh, who specializes in digestive surgeries, but his main areas of interest being liver cancer, liver transplantation, and ge complex gastrointestinal surgeries. Complex gastrointestinal surgeries. He's a surgeon specializing in these fields. He underwent many sharpenings that paved his way to um, take him to the place where he is today. He began his journey in medicine with his graduation and MS honors in Gujarat University and went on to receive his advanced surgical training and his FRC, uh, FRSC from the Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh, UK. He also received many fellowships and further training from Paris, Heidelberg, uh, Asian Medical Center for Liver Disease and Liver Transplantation, Singapore, and even Assam Medical Center, Seoul, South Korea. He's been uh, associated with Sterling Hospital as a surgeon since 2002. Furthermore, he has been the one that he has been one driving force to coordinate efforts in starting the cadaveric liver surgery, liver transplantation in Gujarat, particularly in Ahmedabad. In Ahmedabad, he's part of many scientific bodies, has presented and has been a speaker at many national meets. And furthermore, he himself has also been organizing a conference named Lever Update since 2009, the aim of which is to educate the young surgeons on the techniques and peculiarities of liver surgery. Well, to go on, I can continue describing his credentials to you, but let the man speak for himself. So please welcome none other than Dr. Hitesh Chavra. Thank you, uh, Bhavika, uh, for your kind words. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, sir, we can see your screen. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, am I audible properly? Yes, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I thank KD Hospital, uh, NHS, uh, Municipal Medical College, uh, and MCON to 2020 for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to speak on the modern liver surgery. Uh, since uh, when we did the residency uh, at civil hospital, we hardly used to do any liver surgery at that time. But later on, uh, we got ourselves trained and this has become our area of interest. So if you see liver surgery, it has evolved dramatically in last 30, 40 years. There has been a huge development in the field of technologies, a lot of uh, uh, innovations in the field of imaging, and liver surgery has become much, much safer. Now, there are a lot of technical gadgets that we are using to make this surgery safer, and it has become uh, a routine surgeries now. If you see the mortality, uh, because of this, this operation in the previous years, the mortality used to be very, very high because of post-operative liver failure, because of the bleeding, and now if you see in the recent years, the, the most of the centers, the mortality after major liver surgery is quite less. So uh, there has been a huge uh, development in the field of imaging. The anesthesia is a crucial part of liver surgery. Uh, then intraoperative ultrasound, it came into picture, which was introduced by Makuchi from Japan to see where the tumor is, where the vascular structures are, to locate it at the time of surgery. And then a lot of gadgets of dividing the liver or parenchymal transaction, navigation system, image guidance, laparoscopic and, and robotic surgery came into picture. And since last 50 years, the first transplant was done in 1967. Since then, there are a lot of innovations in the field of uh, liver transplantation and that has made uh, more experience in the, in the field of liver surgery and, and, and more and more difficult cancer surgery has become common now because of this training. 
and furthermore a portal of embolization alves icg guidance all this came into picture and there are has been a lot of development in the field of liver surgery so if you see uh, these patients who undergo this major operations uh, it is important to understand that liver is the organ which regenerates this is the only organ which regenerates if you remove part of the liver liver regenerates so in a normal person if you remove uh, uh, about 70% of the liver the 30% of the liver a person can survive so liver has a tremendous capacity to regenerate the journey began more than 150 years before where a lot of attempts were made to do liver surgery and and slowly uh, the first successful liver resection was done in 1911 uh in the france and there has been a lot of uh, excitement lot of other techniques were developed to to divide the liver first uh, uh the finger fracture method was introduced in 1950s by a taiwan surgeon and then lot of gadgets came into 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 market and there are uh, many scientists who who invented uh, and found out uh, the difficult anatomy of the liver starting from glisson who introduced glisson's capsule and then clonard who introduced clonard classification and then and so on and so forth so uh, this 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 knowledge of anatomy in case of liver is very very important and this has made uh, uh, a nomenclature for for liver resection and that was introduced in 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 2000 that's called ihpb a brisbane classification for segmented anatomy of the liver and then a lot of more innovation in form of ultrasound guided dye injection which was introduced by makuchi glissonian pedicle approach uh total vascular exclusion ex situ liver resection anterior approach hanging maneuvers so all this development happened uh, in last 30 40 years and that has made a lot of huge change uh, in the field of liver surgery the icg clearance test uh, which was uh, which is mainly used in the in the eastern countries was introduced by makuchi uh, to make the liver surgery and resection safe and he introduced this icg retention at 15 minutes Uh, which was used as a criteria as a, as a makuchi criteria for liver resection so that was introduced and it is mainly used in the in the eastern countries so and and furthermore the newer concepts are to preserve the liver parenchyma so as far as liver we have to preserve if we are doing a, a surgery uh, for for liver cancer and the transfusion rate after liver surgery has decreased we know what's the anatomy how to mobilize the liver we use intraoperative ultrasound pringle maneuver and there was this all this has made liver surgery safe most of the patients they stay in hospital for five or seven days one day in icu and the overall mortality after liver surgery has drastically come out and and the blood loss at the time of surgery has drastically gone down so this was a major cause of of mortality in the in the previous years so it is important to understand how is the liver whether the liver is normal whether the liver is cirrhotic or whether the liver is cholestatic because of chemotherapy or cholestatic because of the obstruction and and that is imp- important when we plan a surgery this is bit uh, something beyond uh, your interest for for the undergraduate but this is just give you an idea what i am trying to say if somebody is wants to pursue his, his career in liver surgery this will just give a broad idea what is happening around the world so so the resection is performed mainly for hepatocellular carcinoma cholangiocarcinoma or metastatic liver disease or benign conditions the hcc that's hepatocellular carcinoma is the most common cancer that we see in this part of the world and is one of the co- most common cancer related death uh, around the world and most of the patient who will have hepatocellular carcinoma will have cirrhosis in the background so this makes surgery difficult and if you try and resect these patients they develop post operative liver failure bleeding and lot of complications and then there are lot of treatment options for hcc like transplant resection and and ablative therapies to cure uh, this cancer regarding resection this is the main stage of treatment if the person has a normal liver surgery gives the best result but if if the person is having a chronic liver disease like cirrhosis if we try and resect this patient they will develop liver failure and bleeding so that that criteria of of, of indication is very very important it has to be an early stage cancer with good liver function good liver remaining behind because the remaining liver will grow as i said if you remove half liver the liver the remaining liver will grow in two months so it is very important that a person should have uh, adequate liver remaining behind he should not have Uh, adic- uh, significant portal hypertension and and depending on the expertise uh, the the surgery is offered the the person who has an advanced disease or extra hepatic disease or uh, uh, progressive 
uh, deteriorating liver function or bile duct involvement are not good candidates for surgery. When we do resection, there has to be at least one centimeter margin and, and good liver remaining behind. Normally, it has to be an anatomical resection rather than non-anatomical resection because the anatomical resection, uh, if we do uh, the chances of recurrence after liver resection uh, will be will be lower compared to non-anatomical resection. And all these patients, they need a thorough investigation preoperatively uh, to plan the surgery. And it is important to understand that, as I said, liver is a volume game. We should know uh, what's, the, what's the anatomy in the liver, uh, what is the exact volume of the liver. We do this preoperatively uh, with a test called a volumetry test. So this is a CT scan which is done preoperatively. We know how much uh, the size of the liver is, how much the, the right lobe and the left lobe preoperatively. And there are a lot of computer-assisted models are available in the market now that can reconstruct image of liver, image of biliary tree, vascular structure preoperatively, like Mavis software from, from uh, Germany. So all these models are used during surgery and it will give a real-time intraoperative guidance during liver resection and these are slowly coming in, coming into a market where you can reconstruct the whole image of the liver preoperatively you know exactly where the tumor is how much you are going to resect how much liver is going to remain behind and that can be virtually seen uh, intraoperatively with this navigation system and also what is nowadays used is the icg imaging that is the dye is injected a uh, few minutes earlier and and the tumor is visualized on table because ICG will take up the tumor and if it is not seen otherwise it can be picked up at the time of surgery. This is mainly useful in, in laparoscopic surgery where you cannot actually feel the tumor and you can see here the tumor is uh, uh, well delineated and it can be resected at the time of surgery. Regarding metastatic disease, the most common surgery that we perform is the metastasis from colorectal cancer. It is the most uh, common cancer that is that is operated for, for metastatic disease. So uh, the patient who has colorectal cancer who present with resectable liver metastasis, if you resect them, the overall uh, the survival improves, provided we do R0 resection, means we remove all the tumor, the remaining liver is good, and there is no extra hepatic disease. If we resect this patient, they will do, they will do well. It is important to understand that this, this patient will have a post-chemotherapy liver and we might have to do certain maneuver uh, to make sure that they don't develop a post-operative uh, liver failure. So the liver will look like this. It's called post-chemotherapy liver. So it's a congested liver. Uh, this is oxaliplatin-induced liver resection, a liver injury. And in selected patients, uh, we try to manipulate volume of the liver with a technique called portloven embolization. This is a very exciting area of liver surgery where if you are trying to reset all this tumor, the remaining liver will be very small and those patients will develop a liver failure post-operatively. So if we do embolization of the portal vein on one side, that the opposite side liver will, will hypertrophy and that will be safer for patient to undergo a major resection. So this is called a portal vein embolization, which takes three to four weeks to hypertrophy and then you go in and resect. So this technique is performed percutaneously. The portal vein is embolized and as I have shown here, uh, the, the liver which has hypertrophy on the left side, the right side is resected. So uh, if you see here, the congested area is the embolized area and you can see the left side of the liver has hypertrophied. So this is how uh, the area of the liver can be hypertrophied preoperatively when we are planning uh, to resect this patient. And you can see here a hypertrophy left above the liver. So uh, this is an important maneuver, particularly for the patients who, who undergo colorectal liver metastasis. So here we try to do a non-anatomical resection, try and preserve as much as liver as possible doing a wedge resection like this and remove all the metastatic disease. This is called a non-anatomical resection. You can see there is no need to go for right hepatectomy or a left hepatectomy. And this is called uh, a non-anatomical resection. And anatomical resection means you do either a right hepatectomy or a left hepatectomy and do a small uh, 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 metastatectomy on the, on the remaining side. So this is called an anatomical resection for, for colorectal liver metastasis. Even if you do a resection which is closer to the vessels for such patients, even that will give a better survival. So what I'm trying to say is that patients who have metastatic disease for colorectal cancer, uh, if you try and dissect these patients, uh, even if they have uh, multicentric disease, they can have a lot of uh, uh, interventions like portal vein embolization, uh, R1 resection, 
and the overall chances of of, of survival will will improve in this patient so this patient had a tumor which was close to the portal vein branch and it was resected reconstructing uh, the the branch of the portal vein so similarly this patient had a multiple liver tumor you can see this mri shows multiple liver tumor this lady was operated for colon cancer and had multiple tumors so when we resected this lady we did an mri and then we you can see there are one two three four five so many tumors in the liver so all these tumors were resected with the help of intraoperative ultrasound this is called intraoperative ultrasound we do sonography on table putting the probe on the liver and you can see the metastasis the tumor is located in the liver can you see that's a tumor so it is located with the help of ultrasonic probe and then that portion of the liver is resected that is called ultrasound guided metastatectomy so you can see what the gadget i am using is a kuza which is used to 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 cut the liver so this is the kuza machine that we use and you can see the metastasis of the liver is resected you can see that is a tumor in the liver that was seen on the mri so this is one tumor and then again we can put the probe of the sonography machine and confirm that we have removed the same portion because we are digging it so all this metastasis can be separately resected and the liver can be you know subjected to ultrasound and find any occult metastasis and you can see all the metastasis were removed in this lady there were five metastases so when we did a pathology examination all of them had a viable tumor so this is how a metastatic resection for the a uh, colon uh, cancer uh, which has metastasis liver is performed so the basic principles are proper exposure of the abdomen to find out uh, i mean the, for the liver and intraoperative ultrasound control of inflow outflow preserve biliary tree parenchymal transection control of bleeding low cvp and drainage the basic maneuvers i am just uh, quickly going to describe is one is that we should uh, have an adequate exposure usually we put a j incision like this you know or it can be a mercedes benz incision where uh, a proper exposure of the liver is done so this is the normal incision that we put but it can be a mercedes benz incision or it can be a midline incision and this is how once we put this incision the whole liver will be seen in front of you and then you decide what what you want to do which type of operation you are performing and then mobilization the the ligament structure of the liver there's a life and the the left coronary ligament and triangular ligament of the liver are exposed you can see the falciform ligament is divided and then the right and the left coronary uh, ligaments are divided the whole liver is mobilized depending on where the tumor is uh, we have to mobilize the liver so the liver is mobilized and then the proper exposure is very very important for this we need a proper retractor system do good good cotry machine and a good assistant to assist you to mobilize and once you mobilize the liver the liver will be in your hand and you can do uh the resection that you that you that you want to perform so this is how the mobilization is done and the other important aspect is a pringle maneuver because liver has a inflow of artery and vein a hepatic artery and portal vein so if we are planning a resection we need to control this and that is called a pringle maneuver so when we are doing a resection we try and snug this area so that when we transect the liver uh, there is no bleeding so you can see the umbilical tape is passed in uh, from uh, this this is the pedicles uh, of the liver and you can see this area uh, is uh, you know uh, an umbilical tape is used for this maneuver this is called pringle maneuver so once we snug this the inflow will be blocked so when we transect the liver uh, there will be no uh, bleeding and depending on what we are resecting we can have isolated vascular uh, occlusion depending on what we are resecting suppose if you are if you want to clamp the right branch of the portal vein and right hepatic artery if we if we clamp it on one side we can see a line of demarcation can you see this is a line of demarcation on the liver surface so if we clamp the left side of pedicle the left side of the liver will become congested and then we know you can see the tumor on the left side so the left side will become congested and we will resect the left side of the liver so this is called a vascular exclusion the cvp has to be low the central venous pressure is is kept low because if the cvp is high these patients with they develop uh, bleeding so you can see the the, the inferior vena cava this is called ivc uh, is it should not be very tight otherwise uh, there is a bleeding from that area the the most important part of liver surgery is intraoperative sonography there are different probes available and these are the probes that we use at the time of surgery uh, putting probe directly onto the liver and find out where the tumor is located uh feel it with the finger and then uh, put the probe on the on the liver 
uh, see where the tumor is and then dig that area. You can see there is a tumor there that is seen uh, intraoperatively, uh, which was seen on CT scan, and that area was marked, and then the tumor is is resected. So this is uh, intraoperative sonography, uh, which is which is used to resect this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, metastatic tumor. So you can see the, the metastasis from the liver was resected. So uh, this intraoperative ultrasonography will pick up smaller lesion like this. You know, if there are smaller tumor can be picked up at the time of surgery and you can do a radio frequency ablation or a microwave ablation or a cryo ablation at the time of surgery. Uh, there are a lot of gadgets to divide the liver. Uh, the finger fracture method, ultrasonic, water jet, harmonic, there are lots and lots of gadgets now. Uh, this is the old method of uh, parenchymal transection. You can see one artery forcep, which is there, which is dividing the, the parenchyma of the liver. And this is a very nice method. And still many centers uh, are using this. This is called a Kelly lysis. Just use an artery forcep, just crush the, uh, the parenchyma of the liver. The pedicles will get separated and you can, you know, apply a clip or a ligature and, and then you go ahead. The, the most uh, the widely used instrument nowadays is this, and that is called Kusa, that is called ultrasonic aspirator. So uh, this is the machine that that's the most of the uh, liver centers they use uh, to divide the liver. You can see the liver has uh, opened up like a book, the right lobe and the left lobe, and this is the machine uh, which is used to to divide the, uh, the the liver parenchyma. The other gadgets are harmonic scalpel, a focus device, uh, which is used for parenchymal transaction. And this is available in the most of the centers. This is a hand probe called focus probe, which is used uh, to divide the, the parenchymal uh, uh, structure. The other, other important thing is uh, a ligature. This is also uh, a widely available instrument, and it is also used particularly for the, uh, the tumors which are, which are periphery located. And once we, we resect the liver, we have to see for the bile leak, because if there are small bile ducts which are open, it will call cause a collection in that area, Will patient will develop sepsis. So we inject methylene blue, try and see if there is any leak. And if there is any leak, we try to fix it on the table. And once we finish the operation, we have to fix the liver, which we have mobilized. If we don't fix the liver, the liver may rotate on one side or flip on one side, and the venous drainage of the liver may get hampered and, and may give ischemia. So liver needs to be fixed to the anterior abdominal wall. You can see it came into its physiological uh, position, and then there should not be any issue with the venous drainage. Lymphadenectomy is an important part after resection, and there are huge uh, amount of uh, maneuver uh, which are which are uh, there, like just like uh, hanging maneuver. This was described by Belgetti for for larger tumors. Uh, sling is passed in in front of the IVC, and these tumors are resected, and also a total vascular exclusion. The inferior vena cava is clamped, the porta hepatitis is clamped, and the tumor which are close to the inferior vena cava are resected. For example, uh, this is the liver, this is right hepatic vein, this is middle, and this is left hepatic vein, and this is the IVC. If the tumor is located here, if you try and resect this area, there is going to be a lot of bleeding. So in such patient, you can see there is a tumor here. Can you see it is close to the IVC? If we try and resect this tumor, there is going to be a bleeding. You can see this is intraoperative sonography which is performed. And you can see the tumor is right there at the left hepatic vein and inferior vena cava. So this is the dissected inferior vena cava. You can see that is the right hepatic vein. And we have done a clamping of porta. The IVC was clamped at the bottom end and the IVC was clamped above. So, so this is called a total vascular exclusion. So uh, this is a very nice technique where a, a huge tumor is uh, involving IVC. So after transaction, a large clamp is applied. Uh, in the superior aspect, and the whole liver is excluded from the circulation. So th then we can resect the tumor and and ligate the uh, uh, the vein there. So you can see this is the uh, Pringle maneuver, and the uh, the inferior vena cava was clamped, and you can see superiorly also suprahepatic vena cava was also clamped, and that's the tumor in the left lobe of the liver. There was a tumor, and that's the clamp which is applied. So now. Uh, the whole tumor is resected uh, with the clamp in place. So at this time, the anesthetist has to be very, very careful. And uh, here we, we have to make sure that the anesthetists are trained because there is going to be a lot of hemodynamic instability. So you can see now the tumor is resected. So this is called a total vascular exclusion. 
where tumor is very close to the inferior vena cava and you can see the tumor is resected and that is the portion of the uh, ivc which was reconstructed and the large clamp is is removed so that is the inferior vena cava the pringle and the ivc clamps are released now and you can see that is the ivc so tumor which is close to inferior vena cava are dealt with doing uh, this maneuver call a total vascular exclusion and there are a lot of uh, innovative techniques like glissonian pedicle approach where the artery vein bile ducts are not separated but the whole sheath the glissonian sheath is taken at the at the hilum that's called glissonian sheath approach where uh, the whole sheath is isolated right uh, right at the hilum so you can see this is the hilum of the liver where uh, the the dissection is performed and the uh, sling is passed so this is the right side of the pedicle so whole right side of the liver is isolated by passing this pedicle this is called a glissonian pedicle approach so and then we again do uh, right anterior and right posterior uh, clamping so you can see the right side we have done right anterior and right posterior clamping so by doing this method we can do right anterior sectionectomy or right posterior sectionectomy so once we clamp this area that that portion of the liver will get congested so here this uh, this young girl had a tumor in the segment 6 and 7 so you can see i am applying a clamp there so once i apply this clamp the area of that portion of the liver will get congested you can see now you can see this congested area of the liver this is called segment 6 and segment 7 so this is isolated clamping of that area of the liver and then this area of the liver can be actually marked uh, with the help of diathermy and it can be uh, resected so there has been a lot of innovative techniques which are used nowadays uh, the laparoscopic surgery is also done in many centers we have also started laparoscopic surgery for liver and uh, as you can see from mercedes benz incision to l incision to j incision to a midline incision and now a smaller incision laparoscopic surgery and robotic surgery is also uh, in 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 many centers now for for resection but mainly it is done for the tumors Uh, which are uh, periphery located but also in a specialized center they perform a major repenectomy when uh, uh, they are they have a trained team we need to have a proper gadgets intraoperative ultrasound uh, flexible scope uh, 3d vision etc uh, to house this program and 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 it is also one of the successful uh, uh, technique of doing liver surgery there has been a societies and consensus conference on laparoscopic liver resection and they have laid down uh, difficulty scoring criteria for the surgeons who are learning laparoscopic liver surgery uh, to start with a smaller resection first and then progress to uh, larger resection so this is a upcoming area where uh, a laparoscopic liver surgery is coming this is a small tumor in the liver that we have resected i am showing a small video here you can see this patient had a metastasis from a uh, gastrointestinal stromal tumor uh, on the surface of the liver which was resected laparoscopically can you see this small scar so this patient can go home next day or in a day or two they don't require a uh, major open uh, surgery similarly uh, this patient you can see there was a uh, 3.5 cm tumor in segment 6 which was uh, resected with the help of laparoscopy so this is uh, so uh, can you see this is a uh, cuza this is laparoscopic cuza and you can see the liver is transected with this uh, this machine uh, called ultrasound aspirator and the liver uh, parenchyma transection is in progress and at the end of the surgery you can see the tumor is resected so this was a laparoscopic surgery where a portion of the liver was resected can you see this liver is resected now so this tumor was resected and you can see uh, at the end of the surgery you can see a good margin so this this patient they go home in two or three days without a large incision similarly another tumor which was very close to the gallbladder can you see this tumor was very close to the gallbladder and you can see this is a very large fatty liver and this is the area of the tumor here and uh, this gentleman had a laparoscopic resection so you can see it is on the gallbladder bed but it was hepatocellular carcinoma and it was resected the whole area of the liver was resected laparoscopically so previously such operations were done uh, with open but selected cases uh, uh, are done laparoscopically nowadays so you can see uh, the area of the liver which was resected and this is the the area of the transected surface uh, on the liver 
that's the, the gallbladder was also removed and that is the tumor which was resected so this surgery can be now performed laparoscopically and even 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 uh, even robotically so it is now feasible and there are many centers who are uh, performing such operations and laparoscopically you can see this is a specimen the tumor so this patient will have a smaller incision uh, uh, they go home in 2 to 3 days uh, the recovery is is very very fast so similarly uh, robotic surgery in a specialized center where do they have a robo can be performed robotically the only issue with robotic surgery is that it does not have a kusa machine so the transaction of the liver is usually done with the help of harmonic scalpel and it has got all the movements that you want at the time of surgery uh, but there is no tactile sensation in just like in laparoscopy because you are sitting on a machine and your assistant is there on the other side so it becomes become difficult but now many centers have trained people uh, they even do donor hepatectomy uh, robotically the problem is the cost it requires a learning curve and uh, still i as i said doesn't have uh, a kusa machine and uh, according to the literature there is no much advantage over over laparoscopic surgery so so most of the centers they still do uh, laparoscopic surgery they use a 3d vision because in in in, in robotic surgery there is a 3d vision so if you are having uh, laparoscopic instruments and laparoscopic cart which is 3d uh, i think it is enough to perform uh, uh, laparoscopic liver surgery so uh, this is a bit last uh, portion of my talk where i'm going to talk about a new innovation that's called alps associating liver partition and portal vein ligation for stage hepatectomy so as i was describing portal vein embolization where uh, we can increase the size of the liver so people have realized that if we ligate the portal vein and if we divide the liver liver regenerates so this is a very upcoming area uh, in the field of liver surgery uh, where a future liver laminate is small suppose there is a huge mass or a multiple liver tumors and remaining liver is very small those patient will develop a liver failure and those patient will need something to increase the liver volume so the, this technique is performed and uh, the advantage is that we can do arterial resection but it uh, has a higher mortality and this procedure was introduced in uh, 2007 and uh, this was the first publication uh, in 2012 by the german uh, people and they realized that if you like get the portal vein and we if we transect the liver and if we go inside after a month after a week and they can see hypertrophy so uh, the first step is to do a liver transection and portal vein ligation and then uh, you isolate all the pedicle and after 7 to 9 days if you go inside the liver regenerates so it is you can see here this patient had a multiple tumor on the right side but the left liver is very small so if we remove the right liver this patient will develop liver failure so in the first step what is done is the portal vein is ligated and liver is divided as shown in b figure so portal vein is ligated and divided and liver is transected but the liver on the right side is not removed but after uh, 7 to 8 days uh, this is the picture after first surgery the liver is kept in a bag and all the structures are sling but the tumor and liver is not removed and after about a week or so again ct scan is done the left liver will increase in size dramatically so a fast a hypertrophy of the liver will occur and then the final step is done you can see this area of the liver a small liver which was otherwise there but if you do alps the liver remnant will increase in size as you can see in figure b and then you go inside and remove the tumor on the right side so this is a second step you can see the yellow area is a tumor the right lobe will be removed and the flr means future liver remnant this lobe has increased in size so if you remove the right side of the liver this left side of the liver is quite adequate for this patient and this patient will not develop liver failure so this is an exciting area of of liver surgery and now a uh, uh, few centers are performing this this procedure has a lot of uh, morbidity involved uh, not done everywhere mainly it is done for patients who have Uh, colorectal liver metastasis but also in in few patients who have hepatocellular carcinoma and very rarely for for hyaluronic cholangiocarcinoma and this is the international alps registry uh, www.alps.net where you can find all the data related to alps so this is a very uh, exciting area uh, of liver surgery uh, where where they have an advanced 
set up uh, specialized set up they they perform the surgery so to summarize i would say that there has been a tremendous uh, progress in the field of liver surgery in last 40 to 50 years there has been a lot of technical advances and rapid improvement in the patient safety liver surgery has become safe in the near future liver surgery will become more precise less invasive due to uh, substantial progress in the development in the field of navigation surgery uh, progress in the field of cancer imaging and also uh, minimal access surgery uh, as uh, bavika was telling uh, we do liver update every year we started in 2009 and so far we have done more than probably 11 liver updates uh, this was uh, 2019 that we did for innovative techniques we had Uh, hosted an hpb core cells as well uh, we are doing one liver update uh, next month also uh, that is liver update 2020 we are having a dnb super specialty gi surgery program at sterling uh, where they do uh, super specialty gi surgery we have residents from all over india now uh, for for this specialized training we have a very active liver unit i invite if anyone is interested to see uh any complex surgery uh, they can talk to me and they can visit our theater with permission and uh, these are our this is our website and we also have a trust to help poor patients who have have liver cancer that's called liver cancer trust amdabad uh hosted by our family members and and we try to help uh, particularly the pediatric patients who are suffering from from liver cancer thank you I, if i have some time i can show you a small video uh you have time yes sir we have uh, 15 minutes if you want simultaneous call on am i am, is my voice audible Yes, sir. It's audible. Yeah, so I'll run it. Yeah. Uh, you are not able to see my screen no sir okay i'll i'll do the screen share Can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. We can see. Can you see my screen now? Yes. And there was a large Can can you see my screen? So the screen sharing is stopped. We okay. can't see the no. screen. I'll start the screen sharing. Just let yeah. me know if you. Yes, sir. Can you see the screen sharing now? Can yes, sir. It? Yes, sir. We can okay. see. So I'm showing you a huge liver tumor. Can you can you can you hear my voice? 
Yes, sir. So there was a large tumor in the liver. Can you see? This is a CT scan, and there was a very large tumor in the liver. And this tumor was very difficult to resect. So this gentleman, you can see a huge tumor in the right lobe. This was a hepatocellular carcinoma. So uh, he came to us for surgery, and uh, we decided to resect it. So you can see once we opened up, there was a very large tumor. It was very difficult to mobilize. So here we have used an approach called an anterior approach, where without mobilizing the right lobe of the liver, we have resected this tumor. This is a very uh, advanced surgery and very difficult operation. You can see we have dissected the hilar area. We have uh, isolated the portal vein. You can see this is the portal vein on the right side, and then we did intraoperative sonography, and then. We we ligated the right hepatic artery on the right side, so you can see the liver has opened up like a book here. Can you see? We have transected the liver, and liver is open like a book. The right lobe is there with a tumor, and the left lobe is without tumor. So uh, this is called an anterior approach, where a large tumor. Can you see a huge tumor on the right side? So slowly the whole area was mobilized, and then we reached in that area. We reached up to the. a uh, right hepatic artery a uh, right hepatic vein that is a right hepatic vein and after transection we divided the right hepatic vein so once we do that the whole tumor will come out so can you see a huge tumor which was resected this is called a right hepatectomy uh, with anterior approach and this is the liver which remains behind uh, after the resection so this is the inferior vena cava this is the area where the tumor was and and that's the that's the remaining liver so this is how uh, major liver surgery is performed and this operation takes about 7 uh, to 8 hours so it's a, a major surgery so i think uh, uh, we can take uh, questions now uh, so we have a few questions from the delegates the first question is uh, yes. that how is the experience of this gastro uh, enteric or the liver surgery is different than other surgical branches see liver surgery is a very specialized surgery uh because now uh, there are courses where you can do uh, liver surgery training you can do liver transplant training and a uh, person can become a liver surgeon or a liver transplant surgeon normally transplant surgeons they perform liver surgery also so this has become a specialized area where they can do uh, only liver surgery training where transplant and liver surgery is there uh, they can also do hepatobiliary surgery training where they do tackle uh, liver cases as well as pancreas and other cases but it can be a non transplant uh, area so it depends on what a person is uh, interested uh, uh, normally uh, when we were uh, you know going through this phase there was no specialized branch at that time only surgical gastroenterology was there was no hepatobiliary surgery or transplant so but now a person when is passing ms exam uh, they can have a special uh, place where they can have training in hepatobiliary surgery or transplant and they can straight away become Uh, hepatobiliary or transplant surgeon so that, that is possible now but otherwise uh, they do uh, mch or dnb surgical gastroenterology and then they take up uh, transplant or hepatobiliary sir another question in your experience is the surgical sector different in india as compared to the western countries uh no it is very good uh, i think uh, experience wise and volume wise uh, india is far ahead Uh, the only thing is that we don't have a structured referred uh, this thing so uh, in western countries they have a uh, specialized centers where all the uh, those particular problem patient will get referred to in india we still don't have that so but still uh, there are centers and there are places where uh, lot of good experience huge volume is still there so uh, it is good in india as well so one more question uh, we described in your intro that you started with the cadaveric liver transplantation are there any particular uh, risks while doing this or any particular uh, precaution that you need to take post surgery when you are doing a cadaveric liver transplantation see uh, i have not covered transplant area because it becomes too much 
uh, for uh, this level. So I have intentionally not included transplant. Transplants are of two types. One is living donor liver transplant and another is cadaveric liver transplant. Living donor liver transplant means a family member will donate half liver for his loved ones. And cadaveric liver transplant means a brain dead person will donate all other organs like kidney, liver, pancreas, and then uh, the organs are retrieved and then harvested and then implanted. So uh, these are the two types. After transplant, uh, I mean, the risk of transplant is about 5%. Uh, so any person who is undergoing transplant, the risk is about 5% in most of the centers. And post-operatively, they have to take precaution. They have to take medicine lifelong and do regular checking. Uh, so that is there. But most of the patients who tolerate procedure will, will usually do well. And the overall results of transplants are quite good compared to previous years. Thank you, sir, again for speaking to us and introducing us to this exciting world of liver surgery. Uh, I'd now request Anjali please to please take over the session. And again, thank you, sir, for being part of AMCON. Thank you. Thank you.